Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are doing another Path 2 series. This time we are on the German cruisers. So we're doing our path to the Hipper. And we're starting on tier 3, so let's get into the commander build. Uh, we are using Carl von Muller with Francesco Membelli and Nikolai Kuznetsov as our inspirations. We have Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, and Fixated as our perks with the Legendary Perk Fully Packed. Now, there are other builds that you can use uh, for the cruisers. Personally, I'm not a big... like I, I don't know a whole lot about the German cruisers other than, you know, obviously fire starters. They're very, very good at that. But they are also uh, very good with AP, uh, especially early on. Uh, but yeah. So Carl von Muller is what I use. Obviously you have uh, Reinhard Scheer is another one. This is kind of your, uh, you know, generic commander. And you can see I don't actually use this. Uh, Gunther L uh, Lutjens as well. Uh, he's your, your tank build sponge commander if you want to use him. Uh, Azure Lane Hipper, I've never actually used this, so I haven't actually looked at this. But it uh, looks like it's kind of a hybrid commander. It's got all your base perks for the the same thing. Except you also get uh, reduced fire, fire damage to your ship. Uh, and then her extra is Vice Defense. Which reduces incoming damage for cruisers. As well as increases your reload time on your damage control party. Uh, so it's kind of a hybrid build between giving you the HE and AP potential. As well as... Uh, you know, a little bit of tankiness there as well with the base trait and the uh, the special perk. All right, and then of course the last one is Azure Lane Grafspe, which her base is Pocket Battleship, gives you a greater amount of hit points recovered for your heals. Uh, also has all of the base level perks that you would expect uh, that you could do either build, uh, but it also has fortified which reduces incoming damage again. Uh, the Ghost is its special perk, which decreases your overall detectability on cruisers and uh, your air detectability. So, I mean, if you're into that. Again, this is why I don't really use any of the other commanders here, is just because they don't really have anything that sets them apart from the base. And honestly, Carl von Mahler's got everything I need. So, I don't really have any reason to go with any of the other commanders. All right, so let's get back into our build. Uh, we actually went in completely without equipment, uh, but you would obviously run Aiming Systems Mod 1 here. Uh, we are fully upgraded, though. Um, we have the Alpha Tester flag. We're running all the boosters because, again, I haven't played this ship since, God, would it have been when the German line came out, so that's going to be a while. So that's why I've got all the boosters on. Uh, it's not for any other reason than that. Um, stats. 22,700 hit points. Artillery. You have 150 millimeter L45, so 45 caliber guns. Uh, you have eight of those that reach out 14.5 kilometers and reload in 6.2 seconds with a 180 degree turn time of 25.7 seconds. The 180 degree turn time is pretty awful. Um, HE shell maximum damage is 1,800 with a 13% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage is 3,996. For secondaries, you have 88 millimeter L45s, which are 45 caliber secondaries. You get three of those do, reaching out to 3.7 kilometers and reloading in four seconds. They have an HE shell that does 1,000 damage maximum and a 7% chance to set fires. For torpedoes, you get uh, four dual torpedo launchers. So you have two, or two dual launchers on either side of the ship. Okay, uh, reload time 53 seconds, um, 11,200 maximum damage with a 1.4 kilometer detectability on those torpedoes. Uh, torpedo range is 6 kilometers and torpedo speed is 57 knots. AA defense, you have three 88 millimeter L45s which are a dual purpose secondary and uh, they do 5 damage per second and reach out 3 kilometers. So no AA whatsoever. Uh, maneuverability. 
maximum speed is 29.5 knots, turning circle of 590 meters, and a rudder shift time of 6.8 seconds. Concealment, 10.5 kilometers by sea, 6.3 by air, 2 is always guaranteed, and 4.7 kilometer detectability while firing in smoke. For armor, uh, you are going to notice that we do have a bit of an icebreaker bow on, I think, all of the German uh, cruisers, to be honest. But uh, you'll notice that we have, what is it, uh, 30 to 60 millimeters? So I think it's 30 right at the front and then 60 millimeters all the way down the sides. Um, so why, why is that important? Well, to be honest, these ships can bow tank anything up to... Uh, uh, 457 millimeter guns so anything up to the Georgia basically can be bow tank now obviously that is just for the belt uh, the bulb right here on the front as well as the belt itself everywhere else on the ship will get absolutely shredded by battleship caliber guns and even cruiser guns so keep that in mind so as long as you bow tank and you angle well you will be okay uh, against most things uh, you just got to watch that Remember, that's only the belt armor and only the bow armor. Uh, everywhere else is susceptible to being penetrated and absolutely punished. So keep that in mind. You'll notice that you also have a bit of a turtleback kind of armor scheme where the, uh, the citadel is angled a little bit. So it's not to the point of the battleships. And it's not really going to help you in most situations. So just don't go broadside. Uh, you will be citadel you will be punished. Don't count on your citadel to save you. Okay? Just don't. <laughs> Alright. Uh, anyway. Overview. Extended sonar. That is the one thing about the uh, German cruisers that is very, very good. Is that they actually, and I forgot to show you guys. They actually have detection of ships out to 5 kilometers. Rather than the 4.3 or 4.5 that you would normally get. Um, that's a huge advantage when you're charging a smoke screen full of destroyers. Uh, whether you're trying to light somebody up on the backs of an island, like you've got a half a kilometer of cushion between you being able to detect that cruiser in a smoke screen or a destroyer in a smoke screen and them being able to detect you with their sonar. Compromising. Higher caliber AB shells may overpin the armor but may still arm depending on shell velocity. Again, that goes back to the armor scheme. Uh, you do have enough armor on the belt to arm a lot of uh, shells, so keep that in mind. Um, but you can get things to overpin you as well. Of course, at this low tier, I don't think you want to get overpinned either. It's best to just not get shot a whole lot. Karlsruhe, one of the most powerful light cruisers of World War I, the ship's artillery and torpedo armament was powerful for her size. She was capable of de decent speeds and matched similar ships of rival navies in terms of her armor. She entered service in 1916. There were 14 of them in the series, so they apparently really enjoyed this cruiser. But uh, overall, I mean, it's a, it's a nice older cruiser, but it actually, and this is going to be a theme of the Germans, is they actually look pretty good. I mean, even their, their old cruisers look pretty, I wouldn't say modern, but they were ahead of their time in terms of uh, hull form and all of that. So, you know, I think it's a pretty good looking ship for an old three stacker. I mean, and it, it is a very good ship in terms of its damage output and stuff. And that bow really, really makes this thing a devastating weapon in the right hand. So, with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're going to be on ring, and we are in the Karlsruhe. Now, this is a ship, like I said, this entire line. I haven't really played much of this line since it came out. Um, so, you're going to have to bear with me as I get to learn how to play these ships again. But... The one thing I do remember about them is they are very good. All the way down this line, they are full of good cruisers. I don't have a problem playing any of these cruisers. Um, they are decently tanky the entire way. They've got great rate of fire. The biggest issue that you generally have is that the torpedoes that they do have tend to be short-range torpedoes, 6 kilometers. And then on top of that, you also have slow turret traverse, which is why we try to take, I think it's Mimbelli, to increase the turret traverse. Could be wrong. But I, I think that's what Mimbelli does. Uh, but anyway, we're going to push off to the right side. Now, the first thing I like to do when I come into a, a match um, is try to figure out who's where on the map and where I can be the most help. And I took a, I spawned in the center of the map, so I noticed that they don't have a cruiser in the north. 
So rather than going down to the south where they have a carrier, they have a destroyer, they have, you know, everything over there, I figured I'll go up toward the north, help these two destroyers in a battleship uh, with securing the north. So that's, that's the goal. And uh, we are going to do just that. Now, at low tiers, you don't really need to have a huge plan, all right? Most of the people that you come up against at tier 3, tier 4, they have no idea what they're doing. And that's not a knock on them, they're just new players. Uh, so, most players that you run into at these low tiers have absolutely zero idea of what they're doing. And you can literally just run over them if you know what you're doing. And we're going to show that in this, this match. Uh, and this is a perfect example of a ship that is solid. You can see I'm actually checking my uh, torpedo uh, distance there. Had to refresh myself. I don't look at the stats before I get in the ship. I get in the ship, I go record a match, and then I jump in and do the stats and stuff afterwards. Uh, but you can see I'm already low, or I'm already spotted, which means the destroyer's here. So we go ahead and knock on that that uh, sonar immediately, so that we can start detecting torpedoes. Not just for me, but for my teammate who's right here in the smoke screen to my right. And you can see we do get these deep water torpedoes already spotted. Now Svetlana opens himself up. I switched to AP a little early. I can't remember exactly how good the AP is in these Germans. I know it's very very good. Uh, especially at low tiers, but I'm not sure exactly how good it is. So we, we are shooting AP and then we switch over to the HE because there's a Samson here, another destroyer, so we need to get rid of this thing. So we switch over to the HE and we are going to start tearing this man up. Now, this is where having a lot of guns comes in real handy. Uh, we've already dodged a lot of torpedoes, but we're going to go ahead and bait these guys into firing more. We know that the Svetlana's right there. Everybody's begging for it. Everybody in here is is clearly trying to hit me with torpedoes. And that's one of the things that you'll notice about these, these low-tier matches as well, is people rely so heavily on torpedoes that they just don't realize that they have guns. And you can see, I am just straight up outmaneuvering these guys as torpedoes. They're, they're easily getting baited in. I switch over to the AP because Svetlana is right here. He's, he's danger zone. Uh, he's also broadside, so we're going to go for these uh, citadels right now. We get him with one citadel there, and as soon as we load up, we're going to finish this guy off. And down he goes. Finishing him with a citadel. We get our HE starting to load again. Uh, the Samson, I do believe, went down, but there's still a Sean Yang here. So we're going, or is it the Cian Yang? I, I forget. But uh, the Sean Yang is what I call it. Or, you know, Shin Yang. Same thing. It's close enough. Shin Yang. We'll go with that. Uh, Xi and Yang. However you want to pronounce it. But uh, we absolutely run over the guy. We get a little bit of help from the Bellerophon, or the Bellerophon in the back, uh, coming around the island. But you can see with all of us here, like, th they didn't have a chance. They never had a chance. Now we're going to start burning down this Phoenix, mainly because he's bow tanking us. Uh, and it doesn't take me very long to figure out that this guy either disconnected or is just flat out not playing. Um, because... He doesn't move. And uh, I don't know if he took a torpedo or what, but we've got a fire on him. He's very low health. I don't know, maybe he took a hit from the battleship. But uh, we're going to try to finish this guy off. Uh, we've got shells en route. We're also paying attention. There is a uh, battleship here in the middle, the Ishizuki. So we've got to watch out for him. Uh, we've got the other uh, Russian battleship over there as well, who's got some uh, potential shots at us, but he's a long ways away, so he's not the biggest threat. You can see I'm constantly trying to measure that Ishizuki up for being able to finish him off with torpedoes. Uh, I know he's there, and I know that he could easily one-shot me. Uh, we do get the Phoenix out of here. That gives us our second kill. We start to uh, focus our guns on the Ganget here. Uh, and again, these are very long-range shots for a low-tier cruiser. Uh, the shells are going to take forever to get to them. So even shooting at a uh, battleship, it's going to take so long for our shells to get there. Now, uh, the Ishizuki's only five kilometers away, so it doesn't take as long. We get a double fire on the uh, the the Russian or the Russian battleship. I couldn't think of what I was saying, uh, and he's going to immediately damage con that. We've got torpedoes out for the Ishizuki. We get a fire on him, uh, and unfortunately, this guy's going to get yellow rushed by that destroyer and and kind of ruin our plans here. Um, and they're going to get killed. It's real unfortunate. But uh, notice that the Ganget is now out of range. We can't shoot him, but there is a uh, carrier spotted. And again, this is going to come down to showing, uh, trying to show the ship a little bit, and that the AP is, is very good as well as the HE. 
So I'm going to be testing the AP at range against this Hermes as we close the distance. Now the goal is to close the distance, obviously, because we don't have very big guns. We don't have the most armor-piercing penetration in the world. Um, so at these kinds of ranges, you're not going to get the penetration you need to go uh, do significant damage. And a lot of times you're going to get shatters, you're going to get bounces off of uh, a armored carrier or a carrier. I'm pretty sure that the uh, British carriers are armored carriers, but but I digress. We're, we're using the AP. You can see I'm trying to see where we're hitting. Uh, a lot of our shells are falling short, so I've got to aim a little bit higher here. And then the carrier's not even moving. Like, dude is straight not moving. We're getting one penetration and one shatter. So it's about a 50% damage per, you know, per hit or per shot. Um, now, most of our shots are still missing the target. And again, this comes down to not having the um, aiming system mods one on. Um, at range, it, it's difficult to land a lot of good targets. Now you're starting to see that we are shattering a lot of shells on that side armor of that Hermes. But the closer we get, eventually there is a point of no return where these shells go from being okay to being oh my god. And that's about to happen very, very soon as we start to land uh, potential citadels. But you can see each one of these shells are now starting to penetrate. And so that's where you, you kind of want to pay attention. There's our citadel. And of course, we got another round in, trying to beat those torpedoes there before we lose another kill and we get another Citadel to finish them off. So you can see that the, the AP from this thing is most useful inside six kilometers. Okay, now against cruisers, uh, you can get away with it a little bit, but inside six kilometers where you really want to use that AP in the low tiers. Uh, as you get higher tiers, the velocities increase, you can get away with a lot more, you start dealing with plunging fire being more effective. Uh, I haven't been able to utilize plunging fire effectively at low tiers and it's probably just mainly due to the fact that it's very difficult to hit things at low tiers because everything's able to maneuver. Um, you don't have those thousand foot long ships that you have at high tiers that'll just sit there and eat penetrations from 16, 18 kilometers away. Uh, it's much more difficult to hit at low tiers at long range. But it also is a lot less necessary to do at low tiers than it is high tiers because you don't need to be that far away you can get up in there and brawl with a cruiser i mean you got the dpm you've got the guns you've got ap and he depending on what you're in uh you usually have torpedoes at low tiers as well so cruisers really do roll the roost and now obviously a battleship can quickly balance a cruiser at low tiers because you don't usually end up getting a lot of overpins so you've got to pay attention to battleships you got to keep your your distance and you can see right here, we're on the edge of our range. And even using as you know a decent lead on a very slow battleship, like we're we're struggling to hit him at these ranges. So we're gonna have to open that lead up. And you can see I did increase the lead to now over two full mills. And uh, we're gonna try to get some hits into him. And uh, a lot of people stick with the HE in these Germans. And the HE is very good in the Germans. You know, you get that that quarter pin. Uh, HE penetration rather than the divided by six penetration that everybody else gets and that quarter pin does make a big difference in the amount of damage you get you don't need EOP but they also have a lower fire chance usually even though it's not nearly as bad as what happens when a, a line puts on EOP to get that extra penetration uh, they get theirs cut in half um, so I don't know. It, you guys will have to let me know what you guys thought. I think it was a pretty solid game. Ended up with three kills, a few citadels in there, really showcasing how aggressive you can be at these lower tiers in any cruiser, but especially in these DPM monsters that are the German lower tier cruisers. And I'm looking forward to the Konigsberg as well. So let me know what you guys think. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.